Hello, Mioni here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV news video, this time looking at the Moogle Treasure Trove for 2022. They title this The Hunt for Verity. They say the event takes place on Monday, the 25th of July 2022, and lasts until the launch of 6.2. This gives us a good guesstimate then of when 6.2 could be releasing, and at the minute that looks very likely August 23rd, which probably means as well that the next live level letter will be on August 13th. Those are both guesstimates, but based on this information, that's a pretty good guess. So Monday 25th of July, a new Moogle treasure trove. If you don't know what a true a Moogle treasure trove is, well, essentially you collect irregular tombstones from doing events and you get rare items. I say rare, but that should really be put in quotations because some rarer than others. As you can see, as we scroll down here, they highlight a few of the new uh, items. But first of all, let's look straight at how you get these tomes. So each time they do something slightly different in terms of getting the tome stones, and they vary in the amount you get. This time you can get seven tome stones of Verity by doing the Orbon Monastery Alliance Raid or the Praetorium level 50 dungeon. That's actually pretty good, especially considering Praetorium is a lot shorter this time than it used to be in the original version of the game, so that might be a good option to farm. Uh, six Tome Stones can be acquired by doing the Ridorana Lighthouse, another Ivelisse raid, so they're definitely trying to get people to do those. Uh, a little bit more strenuous to do, just for six. Uh, for five, you can do the Royal City of Rabanasta. Now that might be one of the better options. Royal City of Rabanasta, incredibly easy to do. It was nerfed considerably over the uh, course of the last couple of years, so that might be a really good option. Um, pretty much guaranteed five without too many issues. However, you can get uh, three or five irregular tombstones from doing PvP. Uh, specifically, as you can see here, we can get, uh, so that's three for a loss and five for a win. Oh, that's actually really good. So we've got Ansel, Hakia, Danshig, Nadam. We've got the Fields of Glory, Shatter, Seal Rock Seas, and the Borderlands Ruins Secure. So if you win those, you get five. If you lose, you get three. Not too bad, I suppose. A lot of people will probably try to do the PvP achievements at the same time because of course you know frontline pvp things like that for the garo event you might as well kill two birds one stone that might be the best option uh, that i can see so four tombstones we've got the keeper of the lake dungeon lost city of amdapur uh hawk manor hard castrum meriadnum and the aurum veil aurum veil actually pretty good um, especially with blue mages that might be one of the meta ways of farming it Four tombstones, that's not too bad. Honestly, it doesn't take too long. Uh, three tomes can be get for, uh, acquired from the Porta Decumana. That's, in, in, that's interesting. Uh, that's obviously the new version of Ultima. Uh, and then we also have Desmal Darkhold. Not too bad, I suppose. You get two tombstones for doing Alphascape v4, v3, v2, and uh, v1, as well as Sigmascape 1 and all the way up until 4. Same as Delta Scape 1, 2, 3, and 4. The Cloud Deck, normal, Castra Marinum, and Cinder Drift, normal. So you can do those for two tombstones if you so wish to. Um, I wouldn't advise those directly. But then, you know, if you go out your way to farm this, then you'll have your set path. So let's talk about the actual items then. If you didn't already know, you can exchange the tombstones in a major starting city state. Uh, we've got Limsa Liminsa Lower Decks, New Gridania, and Aldar Steps of Nald marked on your map. Uh, you will find them with a Moogle face. So the rewards this time around include the Demon Brick Earring. This is a brand new item, so I can't actually preview this for you because we don't have any pictures and it's not in the game. Uh, that's for 100 tomes. This does seem to be uh, the first time we have seen this. It has been talked about a long time. A lot of people have found this on the Lodestone many years ago and wondered where it was from. Well, we finally know now. Uh, 100 tomes for that. So you'll have to figure out if the earring is worth it for you or not. Uh, for 50 tomes, we have the Lunar Kamoi Fife, which of course is uh, obviously the Tsukiyomi based uh, dog mount from Stormblood. Pretty cool if you want to get that for 50. The Ufiti Horn, which of course is the Gorilla, that's also 50. We have the Wind Up Elvan Minion, that's for 50. Pretty good little minion there. 
Then we have Modern Aesthetic Saintly Style. This is actually the one you can get for uh, Sky Builder scripts. It was added in the Restoration of Ishgard. Uh, that's for 50. We've got the Escape Orchestrion Roll, which is obviously, you know, the Escape music. Uh, we can't play that for copyright reasons. We have the Ballroom Etiquette, the win uh, Winsome Wallflower, which is, of course, the Slasher Lean emote, which was also introduced in the Ishgard Restoration Sky Builder script stuff. That's for 30. That's actually pretty cheap. We've got ostensibly special Time One maps. This will give you a guaranteed teleportation portal for a level 80 party. Bear in mind, that's the level 80 maps and not the level 90 stuff, so... Um, you can get two of those level 80 eight player maps for 30. Not too bad, I suppose. Then we have a series of weapons and items. So we've got Thundercloud, which is a Lancer's arm at level 50 for Dragoon and Lancer. We have the Behemoth Knives, which look pretty cool, I suppose, level 50 Ninja. Then we have the Heavy Behemoth Helm, which is level 50 for tanks. Then we have the Normal Behemoth Helm, which is just Disciple of War. So you can be any Disciple of War and equip that, level 50. Then we have the Behemoth Mask, which is a Disciple of Magic locked, level 50 helm. And then we have the Ring of Lasting Shelter, does nothing specific, it's just a green looking ring, level 50 all classes. Then we have the Pixie Earrings, again, nothing too amazing looking, level 50 all classes. Then we've got the Tribal Mounts that obviously have made a return. For 30 tomes you can get the Elbs Torn which is the Cavalry Hel uh, Elbst. We can get the Bomb Palanquin for 30. We can get the Gullifaxi, which is obviously from, um, obviously, uh, the, the, <laughs> the original Trial Mounts from the original uh, Extremes. We've also got Markarb, and we've got, uh, then we've got the, some Bird Mounts. We've got a Round Lana, and then we also have the Warring Lana, all for 30 each. Then, moving on from that, we've got an MGP Platinum card, which is 50,000 MGP. You can get 50,000 MGP for 30 tomes. Not too bad, especially if you've got everything else and you get these casually, you might as well get some MGP. We've got some housing items. The Step Bed uh, for 30. We have the Siphon Coffee Brewer for 30. We have the Fat Cat Wall Chronometer for 30. We have the Bomb Cauldron for 30. And we have the Ronkin Rocking Chair for 30. The Ronkin Rocking Chair is one of the best items, I think. I love it. Then, uh, if you're interested in some aiming gear specifically, we've got the Neo Ishgardian set, which is the Neo Ishgardian cap. Uh, that will cost 15. Uh, the top is 15, aiming 15, bottoms 15, and boots 15. So that five piece armor set for archers and bards and machinists and dancers, 480 item level, level 80 you know, 15 tomes a piece. Don't know why specifically just the aiming set, but just the aiming set if you wanted to get that. Then we have the movement speed increasing uh, riding maps for the old areas. We've got Western Fanalan. All of these will be 10 tomes. We've got Central Fanalan, Eastern Fanalan, Southern Fanalan, and Northern Fanalan. Those are all 10 each, like I say. We've got Triple Triad cards, Biggs and Wedge card for 10. Uh, the Thrixio card for 10. Then we have the Kaitan Dansheng card for seven. We've got the Yazamat card for seven. That might be a good one to get, considering where Yazamat card is from. Then we have two minions. We've got the Tora Jiro, which is for seven. May I just mention the Tora Jiro is actually one of the more difficult minions to acquire if you don't do hunts and things like that. So definitely pick that one up. And the Hedgehoglet for seven as well. Really nice minions, both of those. Then we have the 777 Whiskers Orchestrion Roll for seven. So if you obviously like Namazu like I do, you can pick that up. And finally, Magic Prism Job Mastery, which is the Blue Mage like star things that you can see at the top of the screen uh, when you're on this page uh, for one. You trade one tome for ten of those fireworks. Of course, there are some restrictions uh, behind getting some of the cards upon like completing trials associated but there we go, that's the itinerant Moogle event, uh, essentially, for this leading up to 6.2's release, which is not too far away. Is there anything on there that interests you? Personally, I might go, obviously, for the Demon Brick Earring, if I can bring myself to farm 100 tomes. It's not too hard to get them. Uh, definitely pick up the Saintly Style Hairstyle if you've not got that before. 
But of course, bear in mind, there are ways of getting these externally as well. So they're less exclusive than you would think, especially when you have access to the market board as well and cross data center as well as cross uh, server markets as well now. Let me know below. I'm going to get out the heat because I am melting in 40 degrees heat in England, which is nightmarish. Honestly, we're not used to that. And I'm preparing for 80% humidity tonight. Excellent stuff. Much love. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay hydrated like I plan to. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.